Hi, everyone. That was very insightful by Shush. Thank you. <laughs> I want to give you um, today a glimpse of how technology has changed the, the financial advisory business. So really how we've used technology over, let's say, last 30, 40 years and how it has evolved and how it has changed what we do for our clients. And, it's, and mostly I'm talking about the last 30 to 40 years because before that, really there was the financial advisory business, especially the fee only, really didn't exist in the way it is today. Because if you were looking for a financial advisor, let's say in 60s and 70s, you probably matched with a stockbroker. You go to a bank and you said, well, I have $10,000, what should I do? The question that they're going to not ask you what your goal is, what do you want to do with this? They're going to say, well, I might have a stock that I can recommend for this. So really, um, the financial plan was really done to demonstrate the need of the product and not necessarily what the need of the client might be. And with the rise of the personal computers in the workspace, that really changed. Because in order to do a, a very in-depth financial plan, we needed technology. We couldn't do it really by hand. We had calculators, and we could go a little bit far with it, but not really a multi-decade plan, or even a plan that sort of projects different goals in your lives. So with the rise of the personal computer, we had, let's say, Excel, right? Now we can do a lot with it. You know, we, can, we can write macros and so and so forth. So we would collect data. We'll give you, like, I don't know, 20-page questionnaires, if some of you are aware with that questionnaire. I, I am aware, giving that to the client and sort of getting the data, meticulously entering them in our programs, and then sort of creating a very sophisticated plan, which could take probably 25 to 60 hours, believe it or not. Uh, because, and it's not even just data entry, it's analyzing the reports, making sure all details are uh, reflected properly, all the assumptions are proper, and then sort of, you know, project the next 30 to 40 years. And all it was doing even at that time is really a very comprehensive retirement plan. It wasn't really encompassing other aspects of how, how uh, risk management should come into place or how estate planning will affect your uh, retirement plan. But that over time changed. In 1990s, we saw a technology boom. I mean, you probably remember how the technology stocks were soaring over time. So in, in that sense, we've come a long way. Initially, our relationship in the past, when it started, was a client and an advisor. There was really no technology in a meaningful way in our interaction happening. And from there, we've come where we use the technology in a meaningful way. And it's helped us uh, build a much stronger bond with our clients. It helped us build more, provide more services to our client. Since 1990s, even though we went through a technology boom and in early 2000, a bust, but a lot of technology companies got wiped out or got reevaluated, for a lack of a better word, had a big correction. The innovation that those tech companies triggered lasted. And, and technology became more mainstream. You know, before, how many people did online banking in 80s and 90s? We started, you know, for anything we needed to do, we wanted to go to the bank. And now we started doing online banking. And, and that allowed not only us, but our, uh, our clients to communicate with us in a different way. And we used, an, not everybody jumped on it. Actually, financial industry was a little bit behind in adoption of technology. Healthcare industry is one of the one that was quite ahead in research and development, biotechnology industries, they were much ahead of us. But financial industry over time realized that this can be adapted in a way where we can provide better and efficient services to our clients. The same thing that I said took us a lot of time, 25 to 60 hours, really shrunk because of the increase in the computational power of technology, especially in the last 15, 20 years. So we've used uh, technology to interact better with our clients. We can provide the same level of service to the client. We can do similar things, but in a lot less time. And hence, it opens up a whole new demographic for us. Technology has also allowed us to do plans for people, younger people. Karen mentioned an example of a lawyer who found a very nice job and he wanted to live like other lawyers who had been, you know, had been in business for 20 years. But 
now we could sit down and do a more short-term goals-based planning for them. Well, what do you need to do to plan to pay off your debt or buy your first home or save for your 401k? So this allowed for us to service the new demographics, the younger people, and put them on a path of you know, long-term uh, save, savings. What we do here at Allfest is we use a more integrated approach for technology. We, we think that uh, financial planning, and you know, we view it as, as a more holistic, and we, we need to find a technology that, that would uh, accommodate our values. So you know, while when we adopt the technology, we do very meticulous research as to what software would be good for us and for our clients. And now the financial planning softwares that allow us to engage you on the other end. So we have a software that we adopted about a couple of years ago, where it not only allows us to do what we do best, you know, the comprehensive part of it, but it allows us to engage you on the other end. It allows you just to uh, participate in the process. So what by that I mean is, if you don't want to fill out those long questionnaires, there's another option. <laughs> you can connect your accounts and other financial information that is available online to you on the portal end, which is the client end, where you can accumulate everything. Let's say if you have three credit cards or so that you use throughout the year, and you're trying to figure out what your annual expenses might be, then this technology allows you to connect all those in. It's, it's a, basically a data aggregation. It allows you to put everything together. It allows you to bring your mortgage on, your bank accounts, and your 401ks. And then you can see a, a bigger picture. And, and not only just for you, it will allow us to see that picture in real time. And it's not like, you know, I saw it today, now next year I'll ask you that information all or again. No, that, that need is eliminated. So technology has allowed us to, to be, uh, you know, more strong, build a much more dynamic and a strong financial plan for you over long term. Now you've heard probably that, you know, about robo-advisors, which has taken the headlines and thinks that, you know, why, why do we need a financial or human advisor when a technology can rebalance my portfolio? You know, why not? Well, there is, there is a lot of advantages. Actually, there are a lot of advantages to having a robo-advisor. What is a robo-advisor? It's basically a rebalancing tool. It takes your portfolio, asks you some risk questions, and decide an asset allocation and say, well, okay, based on your profile, you should have, let's say, a 50-50 stock and a bond portfolio. And then it's on autopilot, per se. You know, It has a pre-selected funds for you. It will select those funds, and then it will rebalance. If you have more equity, it will sell it and buy bonds, and vice versa. And it is, and it is good for people who have very little amounts to start with, because advisors have a certain minimums that they start with. So if you have small amounts to start with, then that's a good start. However, what it doesn't take into account is the more comprehensive part of planning. So let's say there's a correction in the market. What will a robo-advisor do? It will probably just sell the part that is less corrected and buy the, the part that is more corrected, right? So if the bonds go down, it'll sell equity and buy more bonds. But if you have a financial advisor who's looking at it, who has a more holistic view of the markets and reviewing this for you, they may pause and see, well, let's see what we need to do. Is this very automatic? Or we should step back and view this as an opportunity, for example. Or just stay back and let the market do its thing, sort of a benign neglect in, neglect in some ways. And, and, and that can work once in a while. It, and robo-advisors are new to the mainstream public. It's not really new to the financial advisor industry. The first one rebalancing tool that was available to the advisors came out in 2004, and that's what we adapted as a firm. And, and it helps us make our rebalancing process, process to buy and sell, much more efficient for our clients. And, but what we did was every time that rebalancing tool created a trade, we would take a look at it to see if it makes sense. Sometimes it made sense and fine, we let it go, but then there are other times, well, I'll look at it and say, well, wait a minute, this client told me that they may have some cash needs, so I'm not gonna play, I'm gonna adjust these trades and then place it. So there are this very integrate part of, of the relationship that technology is not yet able to accommodate as a result. And, 
you know, we, we all have a very emotional relationship with our money, and I think that, <laughs> that's where, that, I mean, you know, the, your advisor probably know what your attitude is towards debt, for say, or how would you, you know, what your attitude is towards savings, and what are your financial pain points are, for example. And this is where a human advisor can add value. We see going forward technology as a very integrated part of this relationship in financial industry. I think the advisors who are able to um, take advantage of it, make it a bigger part of a business in a meaningful way, will be ahead of the game, will be able to service their clients in a, in a very, very meaningful and, and, and a very you know interactive way. Clients today ask for their interaction, just don't want to hear what what we say, you want to see them. You want to see in a more dynamic way how it changes. What happens when the market corrects 20%? You know, am I going to be okay? Things like that. Those things that took a long time to do before can be done very, very quickly. So we are somewhere in between present and future where we are, and that's what we are attempting to do on our end at Allfast, where we are looking at not just the financial planning technologies, but other technologies that help a day-to-day -day business uh, for example, client relationship manager uh, technology, the technology for marketing that Ali might talk about a little later. So we've looked into the invested heavily because it allows us, the technology allows us to, um, for the process uh, of collaboration to exist, it allows us to engage you in a meaningful way. So I think it'll be interesting. One of the things that comes up often is the security of how, you know, technology is going to work. A lot of uh, banks and financial industries are now heavily investing in security. Uh, they know that that is an essential part of uh, doing business. So before they would outsource the security to a vendor, but now a lot of uh, financial industry um, institutions have created departments to invest. They have uh, chief technology officers and they have even uh, uh, a security crime divisions where they are on the lookout for the frauds and things like because that's really important nobody wants their institution that that will do better will will come out ahead and we are also very cognizant of you know financial security that's the question one of the questions we get asked often when we introduce our systems to our clients that what is the nature of our financial um, our our technological software and how does the security matter and we ha our software, at least the one, the financial planning software, has a, a big name behind it, and they have a very strong security um, team behind it. Um, they like to call they have a military grade security, which is we are, uh, which is better than a lot of uh, banks have. So there is uh, advantage to it. But you know, we, we don't you know just sit there because of it. We have our internal uh, controls for security when, when people call for withdrawals and things like that. We are very mindful of you know, knowing our clients. Well, wait a minute, our clients never email us about withdrawals. So you know, we'll, so that's where we, uh, a human advisor will add a lot of value and in interpreting what technology is really saying. What does it mean, you know? We talk about AI, but AI is, while it's come a long way, it's still at a nascent stage. And where it will go is uh, something that we are looking at. We don't know. Um, we are adopting it in a way that is uh, meaningful to us and makes us more efficient in our day-to-day -day life. So I think, you know, just looking out for more. Thank you.